How can we cope with the tough economic conditions uh, today? Should we reduce our spending or simply continue lamenting? Well, we'll be focusing on that and a lot more tonight on the show, including giving you some tips on how you can manage these hard economic times. A very good evening. Thank you so much for joining us on Business Perspective tonight, the 25th day of September, the year 2017. My name is Doreen Komhanj. Remember to join the discussion on social media. That's on Facebook, NBS Television, Twitter, at NBS TV, at Doreen Komhanj is my personal Twitter handle, and the hashtag we'll be using tonight is NBS Business Perspective. Prices for food and gas, among other things, are fast rising, with a big number of the population struggling. Now, some families are surviving on one meal a day, not because they want to, but because the finances are forcing them to make such decisions. So that's exactly how some of us are actually uh, surviving out there in this challenging economic times but are we doing it the right way we have the right solutions to these challenges how exactly are we spending amid these challenges joining me on the show tonight is a business consultant mr simon sekai who will be telling us about you know what he makes of the situation but again also giving us solutions practical solutions to these challenges all right, so Simon, I need you to talk about the hard economic situation that everyone seems to be talking about. I mean, today, even if someone has to pay you money, they refer to the hard economic situation. Now, I don't know what your take will be on that. First of all, what's your take on the situation today? Is it hard, like everyone is describing it? There's one thing I believe in. Challenges make us grow. Some times like these are made for some people. Mm. I always tell people that this, our, this is our time. Whenever there is a challenge, you shouldn't focus on what is challenging you. You should focus on the opportunity within the challenge. Mm. That is why in the rainy seasons, the umbrella guys are making money because they look for an opportunity in a situation. Yeah. So I do believe, yes, the economy is becoming hard, but mm. what I don't want to accept, it's becoming a song. When you look at social media, all people are saying the economy is hard. What is an ordinary Ugandan going to do mm. in a situation if you keep on telling them? It is true. Mm. that uh, recent in secret of recent our economy grows at the rate of almost between one and two that is understandable mm. but the challenge is we the average people i always call myself an average person part of them we need to survive mm. we need to live mm. so how do we live in such a situation all right you don't want us to sing i do love so it. other than singing <coughs> what option do we have the first important thing that so many people have really left out mm. is they really concentrate so much on uh, the common things save save you have you have to save you have to work a lot yeah. you have to do a bcd but again those are like songs that people sing every day mm. and let me tell you ugandans are working hard they wake up so early they go to bed late but the challenge is they don't get anything from what they're doing so i don't want to sing that song what I want to ask myself is, there is something we missed. Uh, I wouldn't want to attribute it to the people that introduced uh, this type of education. Mm. Uh, I always believe that he who that prescribes the diameter of your understanding determines the circumference of your activity. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying this? The people that gave us this kind of education or this kind of orientation in our country, they knew and they still know how far we can go. So the question is not about what you know today. Mm -hmm. The question is about what you understand or whether you understand what you know so that you can use it first to influence other people's lives and secondly to change your life. Mm. So yes, the times are hard, but the first thing that we must do or that we must look at is finding our strength. I can't say you're here because of your education. No, you're here because of something you identified as a passion you have developed it over time mm. and now it is going to earn you mm -hmm. yes this is not the end because there are lots of things that you can do you can be a media consultant you can open up a pr consultancy you can even go to universities or colleges mm. or high school inspiring mm. young people mm. how they can start and be maybe like you in their mm. dreams so what i'm saying is in these financial time in these hard financial times the first thing that we need to understand is where are we 
and go away. Because if you're seated somewhere, uh, employed, that mm. is what we call the rat race for, the corporate rat race. Mm -hmm. What's that? You wake up, you have a good job that gives you between 1, 1 M and maybe 1.5. You're able to access a salary loan. You get a good car. Uh, you have places that you sit in in the evening, but you never grow. You have the money, you live a, a life that other people can think it's good, yeah. but you're not growing. Yeah. Why? Because we are slaves of the 21st century. You become a slave of your employer and you refuse to find your strength, develop it and maybe expand it. So, so how do I sit back? You know, because it's a comfortable life <coughs> like you've described, you know, uh, someone somewhere earns a salary they thought they would never earn. They're able to access a good car. They can rent a very good apartment and, you know, drive a small car, but, but an okay car. Yeah. Uh, so what is going <coughs> to knock them out of their comfort zone? to make them realize that, hey, you can actually do more than this. They always say that people usually wake up only when challenges are there. For instance, if the economy is hard, as people claim, it means organizations are going to downsize. So which means people are going to lose jobs. So those that didn't have anything to offer other than a specific job that they're doing, they're going to lose it. Mm. I can give an example. Uh, one of the effects of the corporate life that we have today, there are people I know I have close friends. At least I know every day they drink beer. Yeah. I don't want to mention names because right. some of them you know. That. At least every day they mention they, they drink beer. I don't know who they are. So you will find that uh, the cheapest beer on the market for corporate people mm. is three thousand. A corporate takes at least two beers. That's on average two beers. They already have their six k. That is stuck somewhere. My cameraman is smiling yeah. at this. I don't know. I'll be finding that out is later. Six yeah. thousand shillings. Yeah. If you calculate it for five days. That is almost 30,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. If you calculate it for 20 days in a month, not counting weekends, that is 600,000 shillings. If you calculate it for a year, that is seven point something. So you'll find that even an average person who doesn't recognize it loses a lot of money because of this life. So the first thing that corporates need to do, opportunities are there, but we need to look into our financial status. So what I think is we need to look at how much do we earn mm -hmm. and how much do we spend? We, spend we need to understand the difference between a need and the want. 90% mm -hmm. of corporates are spending on want. A want is backed, by, backed up by an emotion. A need is backed up by a reason. So when you look at the life we are living in today, it's like we are fighting our own growth, our own development. But I thought people go to work to be happy. <coughs> I thought people wake up every day to go to their offices, to be happy, to be able to get to themselves what they feel they want or need, depending on how they look at it. So there's someone somewhere who survives on beer. My father used to tell me that in life you have two choices. Mm -hmm. You can choose to be average or you can choose to be extraordinary. But he said that the difference between an ordinary person and an extraordinary person is just an extra. But that extra that you put in that make you an extraordinary person comes from you finding out something that other people can't do. do. They okay. can't do, but yeah. they can't do it the way you do it. Right. The reason why your prints on the thumb are unique is because there is something unique that was hidden in you. And if you find it, and grow it without focusing on money. Trust me, you can move nations. So how do I discover that uniqueness in me? All of us are working for greatness. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sure I want to be great. I also want to be great. Greatness is a product of influence, which means you can't be great unless you command influence. Influence is a product of significance. Mm. You can't command influence unless you're significant. Significance is a product of value. You must have found value in you that People, other people can recognize to, to see you as a person of value, to give you this job that you have, to give you these opportunities. Mm. Value is a product of uniqueness. There is something that you have to find out that other people don't have. Even if they have, they can't have it the way you have it. That uniqueness is a product of uh, a gift. And the gift, if you don't believe, a gift is given by God. So, so do I need to go on a vacation? Uh, do I need to go to church for me to be able to discover this uniqueness? Because, or do I have to wait for Simon to tell me that, you know what, Doreen, I think you were designed to do this. 
uh, this, uh, especially like in Africa, our environments don't give us the opportunity to find and grow ourselves. Why? Because our environment trains, trains us to focus on money, to survive and live for a day. So people are not focusing on tomorrow. That is why today people are uh, planting eucalyptus, pine trees. Why? Because they want to get money tomorrow. Mm. But they forget that even those trees they found that have, that have given them money were planted, planted by people yeah. who are patient. Mm. So what I think is the first important thing in these so-called hard times, one, we must look at our income and our expenditure. I urge every, uh, every person who can listen to this or watch this, buy a small book, move with it. Every day in the morning, whenever you spend a penny, you write it and put the reason. Eh. Every day, whenever you lose a penny, you write it and put the Isn't reason. that stressing? No, because no, no. Sometimes, sometimes you'd rather not know how much you've spent. <laughs> you can't grow or expand <laughs> yeah. unless you know how much you're making. You must know your worth. So when you do that Monday, Tuesday, on Sunday evening, when you know you can no longer spend, add, uh, see the total. I'm asking you to do it for a Is month. that practical? It is practical. Then at the end of the month, see the total and look at your income. You're going to realize that almost 70% of Ugandans are living in a deficit. The moment you, bo it's like uh, going to the bank to get money, like a loan. The moment you get money and you fail to bridge the gap that you have created in your life, you're going to become a slave of money, which means you're going to be working for money. You'll never have an opportunity to use money to work for you. Besides money, what else do we work for? We are looking for happiness. Money is searching for one thing, happiness. Billions of money don't give happiness. But people are looking for this money because they think when you get that money, you'll have the happiness. Let me tell you. What ladies do when she walks or when she's uh, going through social media or on the internet and she sees a good dress and she looks around Kampala, she identifies a place where it is, where it is sold. Even if she doesn't have money, she'll go there. She'll see it, check it, and even put it on to feel good. From there, they get the motivation to scheme for all ways of, of getting, getting that money dress. To get the dress. And the moment they get the money, they go get the dress. So at the end Is it of just the about day, ladies? No, I'm just giving an example. Okay. Even, but, <laughs> but the honest truth is, uh, most men, most ladies, okay, for them, they know what they want, a few small, small things, and they are willing to risk, to work so hard, and to give in to get to them. Men, on the other side, sometimes relax. And what is really uh, frustrating us so much is that we don't know what we want in life. You don't know why you're working. Because, let me tell you, corporates wake up every day, they leave bed at five. They are very angry of leaving bed when they still feel the sleep. They have the sleep. They go take a cold bath. They uh, drink a, f a few things if they have. They sit in a taxi. They endure sitting with someone who doesn't smell well, whom they don't know where he spent a night. So they endure to sit there in a taxi, wait for traffic, to go to a work or to a job that they hate, to work with people they no longer want. Why? Simply because they are focusing on money. They are focusing on the paycheck at the end of the month. So you will find that if you do some research in some organization, you will find that almost 60% of employees hate their jobs. But they continue coming every day because of the paycheck. They can't, lead, they can't survive. So why is it that other people can lead and others choose to follow? What's the difference between a leader and a follower? A leader t makes a decision to lead. A follower decides to follow. The day we all decide to find something that we can concentrate on and build, trust me, that is the beginning of economic growth. Yeah. So as the times, you know, <coughs> harden, finally, uh, everyone seems to be under pressure to invest. Everyone is talking about spending. I need to spend here. I need to spend there. <coughs> now, whether they are spending good on assets or faucets, you know, that's again for them to judge. But from your own, you know, observations here and there, are we spending in the right places as individuals? When I'm investing my small earned income, first I ask myself, why am I spending? Why am I investing? What is it that I want at the end of this investment? Mm. Uh, I don't want to advise someone to tell them that this is the right, uh, the right path that you can take as far as investment is concerned. 
anything can work in this economy. But the question comes back to square one. How are you investing and why mm. are you investing? Mm. Yes, you've saved your money. What is it that you want in that something that you're doing? And secondly, the Ugandans must learn that investments are not like beans. <coughs> you plant the land after a few you weeks, know, you, you, start you harvest. Earning, yeah. Investments take some time mm. to grow. So which means someone must be patient. The problem is, how do you plan for what you earn? We were recently in Kamuli doing some studies about some government pro programs that were supporting people to change their lives. Then we found a lady that shocked us. A lady had spent eight months looking for 50,000 shillings to start a business. All people that were there got shocked. They asked her, what are you going to do in 50,000 shillings? She said, I'm going to buy three kilograms of uh, genets, buy a roll of a polythene that they use, then I'll go, <coughs> fly my genets, use a sigiri home, and all people realized that it was true. But this lady had spent eight, eight months, months looking for 50,000 shillings. It's unbelievable. So what am I saying? People have money, but the challenge is they don't know what, what they want the from the money that, yeah. you, that yeah. they have. Mm -hmm. So they end up losing it without getting mm -hmm. it. So before you earn money, before you get your money, mm -hmm. you should know what is it that you want from it. Whether you see it as little, mm -hmm. whether you see it as much, someone else is looking for that same amount, amount of, of money, money yeah. to do something. Yeah, true. So a, that is why you will find corporates seated in office with 10 million shillings on account, but they are, looking for, they are still looking for something to do. Mm -hmm. Then you find a young man in Owino using 2 million shillings to survive. Mm -hmm. Rent, he has a wife and a kid, mm -hmm. but they are surviving. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? The difference is between knowing and understanding. Mm. Some people know, they have a lot of knowledge, but the challenge is they don't understand the knowledge that they yeah, have. I can give you an example. I have a, a friend of mine, <coughs> he's a doctor in Makere, he used to be my neighbor in Chisori. One day he had a, a new Land Cruiser TX, the, the, three years ago. They were new, they were brand new cars, people could feel proud. I had a very old car, but it could take me to work mm. those days. Mm. <coughs> so one day, he started his car and it failed to start. This is a guy with a doctorate. He started the car, but failed to start. Then, as I was moving out, he said, time when I have a lecture in Makede, it is nine. Could you help me because my car failed? Mm. I also went to try. When I tried, he didn't start. But because I was uh, driving an old car that had lots of problems, mm. I somehow sensed, but I could not believe because, okay, that is not my display. Mm. So, okay, he accepted to sit in my car. It was very uncomfortable to sit in my car. Not, the difference, <coughs> not yeah. So good, but <laughs> I dropped him. But along the yeah. way, I told him there is a guy I know. Mm. He has a garage in Mengo. This guy is very good with Toyota vehicles. He said, what did he study? I told him, no, he didn't study. He didn't go to school. He stopped in primary two, but he's been going through garage, gar garages to learn. Then one day he got an opportunity to work in Toyota. So he mastered Total vehicles, he said, he was skeptical, of course, mm. as you know, people were educated. Mm. I'm not educated. <coughs> I'm not saying that being educated is bad, but he was skeptical until when, at around four, he gave me a call and told me, okay, you told me about that guy, could we pick him? I picked, this guy is called Geoffrey, we drove to Chisuga. When the guy started the vehicle once, he nodded his head that showed that he had realized and understood mm, the problem. Mm, mm. So he told, asked the guy, have you ever given this vehicle to any mechanic? He said no, he wanted to pretend. And we insisted, have you ever given this vehicle to any mechanic? He said, okay, yes, one day I had a problem and my mechanic took it. Then the guy told him, your start has a problem. And the guy couldn't believe this is a new vehicle. Mm. Then he accepted, we forced him to, uh, to allow us to remove the start. On removing the start, the guy realized that they had changed the new one and had put yeah, it old. An old one, yeah. An old one. Mm. So, standing on the side, doctor asked the guy, how much? He said, get, get for me 260,000 shillings. I'm going to go buy it, then fix it. Then doctor removed 400,000 shillings and gave it to this guy. A person who is a student who was standing aside, I realized that the world is no longer for the 
for those that with a lot of knowledge, but those that understand what they know. Mm. So they challenged the doctor knew how to drive his car. He knew it. He knew even the type. He knew even the petrol that it uses or the fuel that it uses, mm. but he didn't understand how his car operates. So things don't fail because don't fail to work out because they don't. They fail simply because we don't know how things work. We don't understand. So the challenge to them yeah. is few people take time to understand what they know. Because when you understand what you know, you're going to use it, change your life and that of others, then you graduate to the level of the wise. They say that guy is, has a lot of So give them knowledge, but <coughs> also go an extra mile of understanding understand the knowledge that you do, you do have. If you're in, those, in that business, understand the rules of that game. Why is it that when they're looking for camera guys, why is it that all people pick one person and they don't pick you? Mm. When they're looking for <coughs> uh, people to do such shows, why do they look for Doreen, not someone else mm. at APS? Mm. Find something that you can do best. Give it your best, love it, and don't do it for money. Make sure there is a problem it is solving and give it your entire effort. After some time, you're going to see people coming to you. All right. Yeah. I thank you so much, Simon. You're it's welcome. been a pleasure. Very good. Very All good. right. Good. Welcome back. You are still watching Business Perspective of focusing on the challenging economic times in the country today. Of course, looking at how exactly can an ordinary Ugandan survive? How can I survive out there in these hard times? So, uh, but as we discuss, you know, the situation, we thought that it's perhaps key, very important, that we give you a clear picture of what we are discussing tonight. Now, prices for food and gas among other things, are fast arising, with a number of the big population struggling. As we speak, some families are surviving on one meal a day, not because they want to, but because the finances are forcing them to make such decisions. Question is, how do you survive? Take a look. Start a living frugally, look at the things you purchase, so make a list of everything and cross out what you can live without. Stop going out. You need to start making a few sacrifices. There is life outside of the social scene, the weekend bars, the nightclubs, or restaurant outings that drain your wallet can be minimized. Buy clothes at cheaper stores. Stop shopping at expensive malls and other stores for your wares. Save money on utilities. Drop extensive channel package plans or water, energy bills, and other luxurious expenses. Negotiate a lower payments with your creditors. During tough economic times, be upfront with your creditors and let them know about what you are going through financially and how bleak things are at home. Stop spending money. When we run out of money, we stop spending. But why can't we stop spending even when we have money? Don't call friends or relatives just because you have run out of money. We are looking at why customers are lost and why businesses are lost as well. What explains this? Now this brings us to the end of the show tonight. I thank you so much for watching. And of course, you know, regardless of what situation you are going through in these hard, challenging economic times, one, you have to know and believe that it's not just in your house, but it, it actually does cut across. But that shouldn't make you comfortable. You still have to do something about the situation. Simon earlier said that get creative, find your strength you know try to look at yourself and ask yourself what is it that i can offer that no one else can offer and get to capitalize on that to survive my name is doreen komhanj i thank you so much for watching till next time be blessed